we're here. We're live, right? Okay. <laughs> I think we're good. Welcome. It is So Together Tuesday. I am Teresa Coates. I am here in Islip, New York. I pronounced it Islip one time and then somebody was like, no, it's Islip. So we're in Islip, New York, out on Long Island. Super excited to be out here. Um, thanks for joining us. I am here with my daughter, Audrey. So can you want to give them a little, Hi. little thumb? There's a thumb. <laughs> so she's here. She's doing the camera work for me because Hawk is gone. He is in Prague, Czechoslovakia, or no, Czech Republic now. And um, there's a little look at my age, right? Um, so, <laughs> so anyway, he's gone this week and Audrey is here with me. So we've been coming up the, uh, the East Coast and we are now in New York, which is super fun. Like I said, out on Long Island, which is beautiful. So if you've only been to New York City, I totally recommend you come on out this way. Come out to Islip. Go to So It's New and Yarn 2. Um, I'm here with Linda. So come on in, Linda. Linda is, Linda Lingner is the manager for the shop. How long have you been with the shop now? About eight years. About eight years. And so the store's been here 19. I was going to say, the shop's been around for a long time, right? Yes. Yeah. Very cool. And so what is your, what's your favorite part about working here? Um, well, it is the customers. Teaching, yeah. the classes. Yeah. Um, the different projects that people come in to do show and tell, mm -hmm. the things that they finished, it's really fun. Yeah, and you do a bunch of the cuddle samples, right? We have a bunch that we're going to show. Yes, I do so. Do so some cuddle. Um, <laughs> Just I'm the a little bit. There's cuddle in the store. Right. Um, right. Love the cuddle. Yeah, because Linda is actually one of our brand ambassadors as well. So she kind of double dips as both the store manager and the cuddle ambassador. So thanks, I appreciate it very much. We got some great fabrics. Um, for the for the classes today, we're doing yeah. the star pillow, and then tomorrow we're doing the puppy. Uh, the puppy. So if you are in the area at all, this is the first time that we're teaching this class, and I'm kind of excited because it's the little puppy from Funky Friends Factory. We might have to bring it out later and show it. Yes, she yeah. just came out. She's one of the newest releases. Yes, yeah, super cute. So you've got the, the fabrics that we're using for this stuff that's available on the website, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. what, is, what is the website? So what's new dot biz or dot com will also work, but okay. we do have all full online shopping. Okay, very cool. Cool. So if you're interested in getting the fabrics that we're using or any of the other fabrics that they have, they have a bunch of cuddle and it's all available on their website or stop on by, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Good, good. So that's what we've got. So let me show you a couple of things because we're going to be working on the star pillow today, which I wanted to show you because it is a, it's like a shaped pillow. It's a 3D pillow that's super, um, I don't know. It's a pretty easy one to do, but because it has like kind of the ins and outs, it's a little bit more... I don't know. It's not complicated. It's a little more shapely than some of the other pillows. We do have some others, and these are ones that she made. Okay, bring the puppy up. Bring him. Bring him. Okay. So these are a couple other ones that we have. So this is the snowman pillow, which you might have seen. You're going to see it again later. I'm going to redo this guy. Um, but this is a shaped one, too. So it's 3D. It has this band that's around it, right? The same, this is a rainbow pillow that we have a pattern for. It also has a band that goes around it that gives it a 3D shape. It's su they're super fun. And then we have um, the star pillows. We have a whole bunch of star pillows here. Oh, did you show the puppy? Oh, come on over and show the puppy. He's super cute. So this is the little puppy we're, we're teaching tomorrow. So if you're in the area, come join us because he's super cute. I love this guy. Okay, so the star pillow is this one and we've done it in a variety of fabrics. So this is the sparkle cuddle. Uh, sparkle cuddle glitter okay this is uh it in the blue this is it in the white at 150 percent so just remember that that's the difference here this one is in galaxy this one is in uh the shag and also galaxy these were made by michelle which is super great um what was i gonna say oh so the 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 thing that you can see is that it has this kind of width to it here Okay, so this gives it the shape and makes it actually stand up really nicely 3D. Here is, here's the other one. So you could sew these right sides, or right sides together, flip it inside out, but you end up with this, which kind of is a little bit more of a starfish feel than a star. Okay, so this one is just sewn in piece to piece instead of with the band. So I kind of just wanted to show you the difference in how this gives it, I don't know, more of a kind of a complete 3D feel to it, which I really like. This one is at 200%. So when you get the pattern, we'll talk about that. Oh, I already did it. I totally missed the part with the beginner box. We'll go back. Um, but when we're, we'll talk about the pattern, but this one is at 200%. This one's at 150. Okay. So before I get too far into it, go back. Don't forget to share the video. 
I always forget this. Share the video. We'll enter you to win. At the end, we'll give away a kit. We'll give away a beginner box, which is a super fun kit. And uh, we'll choose a lucky winner at the end of that. So go ahead, share the video. We'll figure out a winner and announce it at the end. Okay. All right. So here is all of my samples of the pillow. All right. So this is the pattern. So come on in. Here's the pattern that we're using today. So this one is one that you can get from our website. So if you go to shannonfabrics.com, you'll be able to download it. All right. It's a free pattern and it has all of the instructions so nicely written and this pattern sheet. So this pattern sheet is what I use to make this guy. Okay. So it looks much smaller. It's just because it comes in when you, when you do the pattern. Okay. But this is what you need. You're going to take it to your copy shop or do it on your printer and you're going to blow it up 200% and you will get a star. It is this big. If you do it 150%, it's this big. All right. So there's your differences. There we go. Look. You see it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. 100, 150, 200%. All right. So let's do this. If you have any questions, pop them up in there. We'll get them sent over to me somehow and um, I'll answer them. All right. So the fabric that we're using today is the Lux Cuddle Galaxy. Bring that in here for you, which is a really fun one that has kind of like this modeled thing going on. So you got all of these different colors. This is the saltwater variety. We also had, uh, this is the jeans variety. And this is, I think, blush. Okay. So we've got a few different kinds. We have them all here. And um, they are available from the store if you want any of those. So whichever one you like. Okay. This is also, this is a good way of being able to tell how the fabric is made. That it's kind of like a, a little bit tie dye -y. So I'm not sure exactly how it's made. But the fabric, the ink kind of goes through the whole thing. And really does give this modeled look to it, which I really like. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our pieces of fabric. And we're going to have batting. So this is one of the projects that we use batting to kind of give it a little bit of um, a stable shape so that it keeps its shape much better. Because Cuddle is a knit, once I, if I try to sew this without it, one, it's not as stable and easy to sew. The other thing is it will kind of um, puff up differently in different ways because of the knit. It will stretch and get a little bit weird looking. So the batting on it really does make it keep its shape and stay where we want it to be. All right. So I just realized, oh, there's my pads. Okay. So what I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to base this down. Okay. Oh, we didn't do ingredients. Let's go back and do the ingredients, Michael. Throw that up there for me. Okay. So what we're going to need is we're going to need our fabric, which we've got we've used in the Lux Cuddle Galaxy. But any of the Lux Cuddles, and like I showed you, the Sparkle Cuddle Glitter is super fab too. Um, then you're going to need the Star Pillow Pattern, which is a free download. You'll need a 9014 stretch needle, obviously, because we're sewing with a stretch fabric polyester thread. I'm using it from Mettler, felt tip marker, a ballpoint pen, rotary cutter, and mat. The craft knife, if you want to cut it the easy way or the less messy way, I guess. Micro serrated scissors, long flower head pins from Clover, fabric clips, if you like them from Clover, the stiletto and pressing tool from By Annie, a hand sewing needle to finish that up. Basting spray from Odif, the 505 that we're going to use. Thin batting. So the one I'm using today is Quilter's Dream Poly Request, which is super thin and I love it. The other is um, you'll need some polyester fiber fill from Fairfield World, which we like. Okay, so that's what you're going to need. We're going to start with the 505 and we're going to spray base the batting down to the fabric. All right, so I've just got like a couple of hunks of fabric. Um, well, fabric and batting. There's my strip. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to spray base the back of this. And flip this up and stick it down. Okay. And I just want to get that in place so that I can then trace and cut this out. Let's see if I need this to sit down nicely. Okay, so you're going to do this on a couple of big pieces. I think it tells you in the pattern a 20 by 20 piece. Maybe it was 18 by 18. Follow the pattern. It'll tell you. Okay. And we're going to stick our star on here. Now, truthfully, I can figure out which way the nap goes. I think it goes this way so this would be the top of my star down for a lot of the lux cuddle it doesn't really matter just put it on there however you want i'm going to put this on here and trace it out okay so i'm going to go ahead and i'm just gonna 
trace around this. You could pin it down, put some weights on it, whatever you want to do. Okay, and we're just going to trace around the pattern. So if you look at this pattern, you can see that I made it with a bunch of sheets of paper because I printed it out, I printed it tiled, and then I just taped it together. And then we just recently found these laminating sheets at the office supply store, and they are fabulous. So that's what I used to cover the pattern. So it's kind of plasticky. So if you've watched Sew Together Tuesday before, you've seen that I usually just use tape and I like tape over it a bunch to get it to um, be a little stiffer like this. Those laminating sheets, game changer. Okay, so I use two laminating sheets and it's perfect. So you never know what you'll find at the office store. <laughs> so you're gonna go ahead and at this point, we're gonna cut it out. I've already got them cut out. So what I like to do is actually take this to the sewing machine, zigzag all the way around it and cut it out which like magic we have and okay. not as smooth as the oven, but close and pull it out. Okay. So with this, you can see I've gone ahead and I've zigzagged these edges so that it's all stuck together. Okay. So these are going to work, work perfectly together. So I would suggest, especially because this is a shape that you want to do that zigzagging around the outside because otherwise these shapes will just fall apart. All right. So I've got two stars and my band, which is a big three inch strip. I can go ahead and pet this and try to figure out. I think it might be that way, which means I can make this the top. So I'll go ahead and put my little arrow for which way I want the top down to be. That feels like it. Okay. All right, so now I've got my two stars and I've got my band. The other thing that I like to do, just because it makes it a little bit easier for me as I'm going, is I like to mark basically where my corner is going to be. So let me see if I can get this. Yep. So I want to mark about a half an inch in here. But basically what I'm doing is trying to get it from the center of this um, spike down to the middle of here and about a half an inch in because that's where I want to stop at each corner. Okay, so I'm going to do that with each one and I'm basically just trying to find the middle of it where I can stop because for each of these I'm going to have to stop and pivot. Okay, does that make sense? So I'm going to try to get these fairly even. Oops. Okay. And then we can do the same thing at the points as well. So this is when my big ruler comes in handy, but my big ruler is so big. <laughs> it's like, it's either one or the other. It's way too big or just a little too small. So we're going to stick with a little bit too small. So here I'm going to do the same thing and I'm just going to come in about a half inch ish and draw a little dot. And basically this is just going to help me make it so that I get my corners kind of where I want them to be. All right. So this isn't absolutely nece necessary. You don't have to have to do it, but um, I do find it a little bit easier just to keep track of things. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so if you kind of miss those marks, don't panic about it either. All right, so we got all those marked. Yes, on one of them. Yes, okay. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to sew this to it. So this is cut with the fabric. Okay, so this is going to be stretchy. So if you remember, the width of the fabric has the stretch, the length doesn't. So when this gets put on, it actually works really well because it doesn't let the pillow stretch this way and it won't stretch out. Okay, but it does because it has stretched this way, it'll work itself around much better. All right, so come on around, Audrey. Let's see if we can get this sewing. All right, so I've gone ahead and I changed my needle today because I did a bunch of sewing. So I have a fresh needle in there. And oh, I told them I was going to show them the, the trick. Okay, so in the pattern, it tells you to make a mark where we're going to um, sew it along here and then we'll um, hand sew it closed. I'm going to show you the way that I do it where I kind of do a cheater method. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fold this over. Let's measure it and say two inches. Okay. And I'm going to pin that on here. 
and this is where we're going to get started. I'm going to use a ton of pins today. Okay. Wait, I just realized. Yes, that is the way I want to do it. Okay. <laughs> I have to, th have to think it through for a sec. Hold on. Okay, because I want to be able to see these marks. All right. So basically, I'm going to sew from the start here. I'm going to use a half inch. I'm going to use a little bit less than a scant, a scant half inch. Um, I'm going to start here, and I'm going to sew down to this line. All right. So I put my foot down. I've got it on a straight stitch. So come on over here and show this right here. Mm -hmm. So we've got a straight stitch right here. Okay. And then I've got it at a three stitch length. So it's just going to be straight and a little bit bigger stitch length. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start on back stitch a little bit just to secure that and then come right along here. Come on, back stitch. There we go. I know it doesn't want to do it for me. Okay, there we go. All right, so then. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this thing. So we're going to take it slowly the first first round, and then I'll show you the faster way on the second one. What I want to do is I want to clip in here to get this to bend around my star. Okay, I'm going to move that out of the way. Stick back in. Sew up to the next side. Okay, and I'm just going to move this and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin it where I want it to stop, which is about there because that was my center point. So I'm just going to keep going right up here. Cut it. And then I'm going to bend it. Okay, so this one doesn't have to get cut necessarily. You can. And if we do, we're going to do it like this, I think. Okay, because this is an inside, we want it to kind of shove closer. And go ahead and put that over here and pin it. Okay, so I'm just going to keep doing this back and forth as I work my way around it. So there's two ways of doing this. Like I said, I'll show you the little bit more time consuming way, which is this one, okay? Because we're gonna start and stop at each little point to make sure that it's nice and neat. All right, we can do it the other way and it'll be faster, but not as perfect. Okay, so again, I'm gonna turn it. I need to get this out of the way. So I'm gonna push that to the back. Get this to come over here, not stretching it. I'm getting it to come here. Okay. All right, one more time. Okay. How many points are there? 12 points on the star. <laughs> go ahead and clip that in. I'm not going to clip it out this time. I'm just going to bend it over, get it back over here. Okay. So this way, if I do it this way, I can keep it a little bit more accurate. All right. We're going to go ahead and do a little back stitch there. Make sure I'm pulling my Fabric. You can see I, like, I'm hardly pinning at all, and it kind of works just fine. I haven't really had any issues because what our, what we're sewing is pretty little, and the batting here actually makes it much more stable. So it doesn't really move very much when I'm doing it. If you're struggling at all, just throw a couple more pins in there, and you'll be good. Okay. So again, the same thing, just pushing that over to the side so I can keep it out of the way. Thanks. There we go. OK, 
Okay, so I just need to make sure that that back, because you can see it always wants to stay down here. And if I do that, I'm going to sew it and it's going to get caught up in there wrong. So we're just going to push it to the side. Pin that in place. Pin this in place. Do it again. Okay. And those little black dots actually help a lot for me to be able to see where I need to start and stop. I'm going to plug you right along there. So this sort of works. This idea of trying to figure out where your, um, where your turns need to be, and clipping it, and all that good stuff, works with a lot of them. We worked with um, one uh, shop, and they were doing shamrock pillows, and that was super fun. So you could do this for all sorts of things. Um, and the shamrock, as you can imagine, had a lot more points because each of those... Uh, four leaf the the leaves had like a little because they're like a little heart shape so they each had a couple of different points on them that we had to to make but they actually worked really really well okay so watch out for things like that Let's see where it got caught up here you make sure i'm pinning it so that doesn't happen okay all right thank you back over Okay, so you can do this like when we, like I was saying, with the uh, the rainbow pillow is the same way, and it has like a, the little the little humps down at the bottom that you're going to kind of just keep track of and make sure that you're following right along, so that you can get this nice nice shape to it. All right, we'll clip it under here, and you don't have to clip it, but I found that clipping it makes it turn much easier. And really just keeps it so that I can turn this here out of the way really nicely. So if this doesn't, see how this like kind of splits open and gives me all this room to be able to move this around and get it to sit where I want it to. If I don't do that, it doesn't sit right. Okay, and I just end up having to fight it more. You're much more likely to get a pinch up there at the top as well. Okay, so it's just a good habit. If you don't do it every time, it's okay. Oops, I should probably pin that next one, huh? All right. And if it's not perfectly even, it's okay. Okay, again and again. We just keep doing it over and over. This is why I was going to do some earlier. I'm going to make them, you know, more of the pull it right out of the oven and it's done thing but instead you guys get to just watch me do it all sorry sorry not sorry <laughs> we'll have a really cute pillow at the end okay. go ahead and pin this up here look pretty close mm -hmm. Should have been having you do um, arm exercises, Andre, so you could like get used to holding the camera up for an hour. Hawk's always like, my arms are tired. That was a long one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Again. I'm going to be real close here. All right, one more time flip it out okay so make sure that every time you do it you have this little thing coming off the side that'll help you know that you did it right I did it just a little bit too far I'm gonna have to take something out I can't believe that already I messed up Jeez, Louise okay <laughs> I really don't plan it I really don't <laughs> These little goof ups are really just me goofing up. I forgot that it was that close to, to matching. Okay, I'll show you what I did. Okay, so when I pull this over, oh no, I'm right here. Like, I don't actually hit the other side. So I have to undo this a little. It needed to be more like one inch. And I was like, let's be generous. But actually, I shouldn't have been. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little clip here, because I want to bring this around. 
and I want this to overlap that. Okay, so I wanted this to be a little bit longer than the other. So show me to get clever. Jeez, every time. All right, so what I did is the fold is underneath here. So it's the, the plain one, the fold goes here, and this one overlaps it. And I'm going to come back under here and stitch that. Make sure that's nice and flat. I hope, I hope. Okay. Go ahead and back stitch, and then I'm just going to go right over these and stitch down what I had to unstitch because I made it too short. And come back over those stitches at the top. Do a little back stitch to secure it. it. All right. Okay. There we go. It fit. Okay. So now y'all know your overlap is really about an inch and a half. That's all. Okay. Didn't realize it was that little. All right. So what was that? Do I go back around? Nope. Come, you can stay right here. Okay. So you can see this is how it's going to work. So now each one of these little points pops right out. All right. It's a really nice little point. And down here, it's going to do the same thing where it's going to sit in. All right. So here we're going to go ahead and I'm going to clip these while we're here. Just because I want to give us a little bit of extra room, you can see how it kind of just releases and just will sit open a little bit more. And that's what we want, okay, is to give it just a little wiggle room and a little bit more cuddle dust in the air. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So I'll just give it a little bit of spread when you're doing these. I don't clip these. You are more than welcome to. If you show in here, you can kind of see that there's a bunch wadded up in there. So you could clip that off so that it was nice and flat. But what I found is it just kind of fills up that corner and makes it sit out nicely. So for me, it's kind of a, it's a, yeah, an easy way just to leave it there. All right. So now we've got to start here. So let me show you the next part, which is actually pretty darn important. So what happens when you do this and you stick the next side on the positioning for the next side is actually what makes the most difference. Because if you get this on and your star points are not exactly across from each other, your star, the, the shape of it ends up being kind of twisted. So instead of the star being exactly on top of it, it ends up kind of like this and you'll end up with a band that makes your whole pillow shift. Okay. So the next thing that we need to do is to make sure that our um, marks are going to match on each side. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just fold this. So that's all I'm doing is just folding this along the line or the mark where it was to make sure that it is actually straight across. So that's my, my method. You could absolutely show you a different way. So you can measure this up against your seam line, come straight across and make a mark. For me, making the mark on the fold is the easiest. So that's the way I'm gonna do that. That goes over here. So the same way here, I'm just gonna fold it in half, make sure it matches that it comes up from this this little part before. Okay, and I'm just gonna aim for that. So if it's if I'm off just the tiniest little bit, you know, it's not gonna be the end of the world. But this gives us a good thing to shoot for. Okay, so same thing. I'm just matching up this raw edge, making it fold across and marking it. And then we're gonna aim for that on the next one. Okay, the other thing you could do is probably measure between, but I don't know that they're an actual, like, even measurement. I can check that in just a second. We'll see. Because that might be an even easier way of doing it. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to measure this between lines. Got just about six inches there. And a little bit less than six inches. Pretty close. Eighth of an inch. See what that is? So it's just about six inches apart. Okay? That's great to figure out. So you could mark those first if you wanted to. And then try to just aim for that. Um, I sew them once and then mark it. But absolutely both ways would probably work. Okay? This part over here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to 
stitch these together because I want to make that fit. So I'm going to go over here and just kind of base this together real quick. So that's not going to go anywhere on me. Okay. And now I have a whole band. So the way that I did this, we're going to have this little hole and that's what we're going to stuff it through. <laughs> so that will be the hard part. So if you want to leave a bigger hole for stuffing, that's what you have. You can leave a hole on the side. But if you want to, you know, the cheater method, this was it. Okay. So here's my arrow down. Arrow down. We're going to start here. So basically, put that just a little before I get started. And I'm going to put that up at my point. Get started here. Wait, I'm going to sew this way. Sorry. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. <laughs> I always have to try to refigure it. Okay, so I'm get this up here in my corner, get my side matched. All right, stick some more pins in. And then I want this, this dot needs to come to the corner and that's where we're gonna match it and get the turn to happen. Okay, all right, so let's give it a try. And we're just gonna work our way around it just like we did with the other one, except from the other side. And then we can do a little um, flip flop on here without taking it out every time. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and sew along here until I get down to where this is going to be. So basically I'm going to pin. So I'm pinning perpendicular to the cut edge and not to my V here. Okay. Because I want to stop a half an inch in from here. I'm not going to save my pin. The back stitch a little. Okay, back up there. Okay, now because I have the little um, the lift. Oh no, what is that thing called? The low where it like floats. I can't oh, remember. Low lift. Yeah, it's like a low lift thing. Yeah, where it like pops up for me here. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to twist this baby. And I'm going to come back up here. Okay. I'm going to clip this right here, Bink, just a little bit, and get it up here. Okay, so I'm going to put, I'm basically marking this one more than I was marking the other one. So it's kind of, a, you either do it before or after. So I'm going to pin another one in here because it really wants to slide that way on me. Okay, so now that comes down. I'm just going to sew along here. I'm going to go ahead and grab my stiletto to help me keep that fabric where I want it to be. Come up here, get up to the point, do a little back stitch. Because I already have the clip in there, I can just pivot it on here. Get that to feed out underneath so you can see that this does the same thing that we did when we did the points before where it comes off to the right there. Okay. I'm going to get that up in there. I'm going to put this where I want it to be. Pin it in place. And sew toward that. Okay. I'm going to give it a little extra stitching there just in case. This is my place that I basted together already, where I'm going to leave the hole. Okay. Because it wants to fight me a little bit, I'm going to start using more pins. And get that to go where I want it to go. All right, so then I'm going to pin that in place. We'll get up there. All right. So up here. A little extra fuzz on my foot there. It's what happens when you clip it and you don't actually 
get the cuddle dust off. All right, so I'm gonna turn it again. The same thing where I'm pulling this over. Let me get that down. So I sewed up near the clip that I did, but not through the clip. All right, when we're done, we'll actually go back and make sure that we didn't actually ever go past one of the clips because you don't want to. Okay. Come right up here. Do the same thing again. Do a little turn. It's really it's a good, it's not a 12 pointed star. We'd be here for <laughs> three days. Okay. But you could, you could do a 12 pointed star if you wanted to. But you'd have to come up with your own pattern because we don't have that one. Okay. It would be like you could do you could do all sorts like actually like letters too. So if you want to do somebody's initials, you could absolutely do it like this. Just trace it out, blow it up, make it the size you want it to, and then just add a little a band around the outside of it. So this one is cut at three inches, which works pretty well. Um, I think we have some of the patterns are up to four inches. So it really just depends on what you what you want. Okay. You can see I'm kind of just like aiming for it, not actually getting perfection. It's okay. Just want to get that secured. Let me get this one down. We're getting closer. Okay. So surprisingly, little pins that I'm using today. Everybody's like, wait, but I thought you loved pins. I can do, but this one doesn't seem to need it. I found that different shapes will need different things. When they're curvier, it definitely needs more. So don't get, don't be hesitant to use it when you got the curves going. Okay. One more that I'm going to clip up here. I'm gonna bring it up here. Okay. I'm going to bring that here. So basically, I want this V to end up in that corner. That's what I'm kind of trying to aim for. That way you can actually see it pretty well that this V ends up in this corner. Okay, so we go ahead and turn that. And what I'm trying to do underneath is make sure that the star, because, oops, well, hello. Because there's so much bulk now underneath the star, like there's a lot happening here, it's easier to get it caught on itself, which is what I'm trying to avoid doing. And I'm actually following the curve just a little bit too to kind of add a little um, less sharpness up at those corners so that it's a nice point but not super sharp. Okay, push that out of the way. One more down here. Oh, we're so close. Okay, I'm just gonna come right along here. Again, do it again. Where'd the other Linda go? Linda, is this kind of how you did it when you did the rainbow pillow? Did yes. you mark it? Yes. That's what I was thinking is all those cloud curves are, um, there's a lot going on down there at the bottom. You want to make sure that that ends up even because I know I've seen a few different shaped pillows that ended up a little bit crooked. I think that this helps a lot. Okay, so now I'm going to get this up here, do a little back stitch. I'm going to get it up to the corner, twist it, and come down and overlap that first little bit of stitching that I did because it didn't start quite up at the corner. All right, let's go ahead and cut that. There we go. We have a star. Ta -da. All right, now, ta -da. Ta -da. <laughs> yay! Now we have the joy of trying to pull this out. This will be the fun part. This is always the part that I'm like, oh gosh, is the hole too small this time? I mean, I did it twice, leaving the hole like this. So I also didn't get any filling. Do you have um, polyfill or something I can use? This is always the hard part. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like really really is that how you're gonna do it yes it might be it might rip i did it fine the other day what happened 
That was my fingernail, oh, yeah. not the flap fabric. Okay, it sounded like the fabric. Right? It was not. This is this is the cheater method for anybody who hates hand sewing, which I know there are a few of them out there. This is the slow and tedious. Did you want to look around the store now? No. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Show the store while I'm working this out. This is going to take you a few more minutes. So you can show how great the store is. So this is So What's New and Yarn 2. And I, so we didn't talk about the Yarn 2 part. It's because you guys have a whole back side of yarn back there, right? You're into right. knitting too. Got it. So were you a knitter and a sewer when you started? Yes. Uh, we opened the... Uh, yarn when the local yarn store closed. Got it. Okay, so she said she opened up the yarn store when the local yarn store closed and she opened it up and now she supplies the yarn. That's great. It's really, it's it'll be there eventually. <laughs> I'm like, it worked yesterday just fine. Oh, great. Thank you. It's good thumb exercise. It, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's good for me. If I have to take this out, I'll be so grumpy. I know, like, it's so funny because I totally did it. I was like, that worked really well. Now I'm like, oh, maybe not. Was it because the hole is so small? Oh, I think what I did, yeah, the hole is small. So so here's here's the honesty, is that when I did it, I think I did a quarter inch seam allowance instead of a half. I think is what I did. Because now I'm like, it's not going to work through. I mean, it is, but it's it's slow and tedious. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know where I could cut it that would make it easier. This is, if this were me at home, just doing it myself, I'd be like, all right, it just goes in the trash. <laughs> I'm done. Done, I'll start over. What I need, oh, you know what I need? Wait, oh, I just had an idea. We're gonna have a little epiphany here. Okay, we're gonna try something. See if I can get my because I realized what's happened. Oops. What's happened is it's. I need to pull these things out. Oh, there we go. And I was like, if I have my hemostats, let us know your questions for Teresa. Like, how did you get yourself in this situation again? <laughs> so I have this tool, which I don't know if I could use, but if anybody's really comfortable with that one, I would love to hear there. Welcome to bag making, somebody says. Yes, yes, this is what bag making is like. You're, you're like, it really is in there somewhere. I swear. So does anybody, has anybody ever used these? So this thing, you're supposed to be able to stick it in there. Let's see what we can do. Can I see it? Yeah, for more, give it to me to try. So it's this big, let me turn our thing. You have to get it in the hole. But you have to get it in the hole and then you have to be able to turn it. So it'd be like my, like, for more, he's going to be like, we're never giving you tools to try again. <laughs> that was ridiculous, Teresa. I'll be like, I don't know, but maybe. See, this is what I'm thinking. It's like, there's got to be a way to do this. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> there's got to be a way. I have not been able to figure out how to use that tool yet, which is pretty funny. But um, I don't actually do a lot of bag making anymore so close i'm so close like it really is <laughs> and i'm like there's got to be another leg that can come out but where's the other leg it's got five of them you'd think there'd be another one that would pop out right oh here here's one y'all laugh i know but we've all done this right we've all gotten stuck like trying to turn something you're like oh no am i gonna have to give up no not ever i have hemostats i'm not sure where they're at oh I felt it pop through. Yes. Okay, we're getting there. We're celebrating after this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, we're, we're, we're getting there. We're really getting there. We're cheering for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I know at home, people probably are. Come on. You can do this. It happens to everybody. It really does. I feel like this is like my, my goof up. We all mess up sooner or later. So this is where I'm like, what are these two? There's two of them crammed together. I can't even tell the difference between them now. I'm like, I don't know. It's something, it's fabric, it's soft. It's still going to be soft when we're done. 
And thank God I used that polyester thread because otherwise all of these stitches would have just come out. Because this is some wrangling, man. Wrangling. And now not only do I get to turn it, I get to stuff it through that tiny hole. <laughs> Oh, look mm. at this. Oh, oh, oh. Is it going to pop through the cuddle? Afraid to use the pointy square, end. Which you square in? Use the square end. She tells me after I use the pointy end first. Oh, boy. Come on. Look at that. Oh, oh. Okay. Yay! Yay! Now I can use the pointy end. Right? Thank goodness. Jeez, that was a lot. Okay. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Thanks for sticking it out with me. This is when you know it's like reality TV. So, you know, like, there's obviously no prep beforehand. And you know, let's get that easy to do. Okay. So, the little chop or the chopstick, not a chopstick, knitting needle. It's great. That was fabulous for pointing, uh, doing out those points. That was awesome. Okay. So putting this tool away, when somebody can tell me how to use it better, we're going to figure out how to do that. And it would probably make that whole process super fast and easy. All right. So now we've got some, a basket full of stuffing. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to stuff some of this. I'm not going to stuff all of it through that little hole because I have to find the hole first. There it is. Okay. So one of the things that's kind of cool about this though, is that if you leave this little hole, why don't you just stick it here? thumb through it but I've left all of those the points up here so I didn't clip any of those so there's a lot of there's some squish in there still and I'm just going to go ahead and stuff the stuffing up in there and it just fills it up faster so it really doesn't make any difference if you were doing this out of a cotton fabric you would definitely need to make sure that you trim that because it would make those um, points really weirdly bulky but because it's cuddle it just actually just fills it up and makes it um, nice and full okay so you can see not actually difficult to stick it through that hole. Turning it, on the other hand, was a little, a little crazier. And that's because it doesn't have any stretch sideways. So when I'm trying to stuff that hole, the hole doesn't actually stretch. What kind of bag are you using to keep your tools in? Oh, it is um, the bag. So the question was, what what um, kind of bag am I using to keep all of my tools in there that I pulled out? That's the um, by Annie. I think it's called place for everything bag and um it's one that she had made so it's one of her samples that i got that she was nice enough to gift to me i did actually make that bag once and it took me about a year because i was so scared of the pattern um that every time i start to work on it, i'd be like oh gosh this is a lot i don't know can i sew vinyl to um zippers how do i do this mesh stuff turns out it's not actually that hard once i've Put myself to it i actually did a pretty good job with it but then when she offered me a new one i was like yes i will take it so that's what that is it's really fabulous it comes with um a bunch of different types of pockets in it so it has some big pockets and some little bitty pockets and some wide pockets um it's just really it's a fabulous it's a fabulous pattern so if you haven't found a place to keep your tools that you can take with you that is a that is a good one okay so we're just going to keep stuffing this little guy Right. So the biggest thing is to make sure that you get up into the corners here. So you can see they're going to stand up really nice and tall. Super cute. Nice and easy. Are there other are there other questions? Because good golly, we made it in that under an hour, even with all that struggle. <laughs> Great. That could have been a half an hour project if you were doing it the easy way. But see, this is the thing is like now once I stuff it, once I stuff it, I'm actually just done. I don't mm. have to hand stitch that close. So let me show you with the other one. I'll get this. I want to get one of the arms completely stuffed so you can kind of see how it how it sits. And we'll bring out the other one. Okay, just stick this full in there. So this is um, actually polyfill, just regular polyfill, which will give it a little bit more solidity um, when it's done. And you can just stuff it as much as you want to. Okay, so you're just going to keep stuffing this stuff out each of the ones until they're full. So let me show you the difference between what I have. So yeah, you can go around back to the front if you want to there, Audrey. Okay. All right. So these are a couple of the different ones. So these, so come on in close so we can see these and we'll see the difference a little bit. Um, so this is the one that's made out of Galaxy. I can't tell you, if, if Michelle is here, she can pop in and tell us what she stuffed them with. But this one feels like it's probably... Um, 
is probably a polyfill because it feels a little bit denser. This one is really dense. So if you see, this one doesn't squish hardly at all. Okay. So it's, it's nice and firm. This one is a lot squishier. All right. So this one is really full. This one I, is the same sort of fabric, but I didn't squish this one out. I didn't stuff this as hard. I stuffed this with the Royal Silk, which is the one I like that's super squishy. So this one is really soft. This one is nice and firm, but either one of them sits up really well. So that's the thing is that you don't actually have to stuff it super hard to have it sit nice. The, um, the harder you stuff it, the more it will keep its shape. This is what I wanted to show you is this is where I stuffed this one. So there's the little hole. Okay, so I can come in there if I can. Bing. There's the <laughs> stuffing. Pop it right out. Okay, put it back in. Ta-da. Okay, perfectly hidden in there. So that's the way this will be when it's all done is because... The stuffing hole somewhere <laughs> there it is so you can't even once it gets done you won't even ever see it all right it'll just kind of hide in there perfectly all right if you want to do it the um the pattern correct way you'll leave a little spot here a couple inch hole stuff it through that hole and hand stitch that close when you are finished all right i think that's it what is she saying? Using, uh, oh, getting shredded memory foam. Kathy Pearson talked about that. Absolutely. That would be a good one. You could absolutely make this bigger as well. So like this is 150%. This is 200%. You could make one that was 250 or 300% and it would be um, fabulous. And you can make it whatever um, fabrics that you wanted to. Okay. Is that good? Do we have any other questions in there that you saw that I needed to answer? Okay. Let me check this really quick. If I can find we have a winner for the box. Uh Okay. Um, all right. So I think that's it. We have the winner. It's easier to have a side open and hand stitch it. It might be Judy. It might be easier that way. I'm lazy. So <laughs> that's all. I'm just answering that question. All right. So today's winner is Jackie F. So thank you very much for sharing the video. If you will, um, you will go ahead and message us on Facebook and let us know uh, what your mailing address is and all of that good stuff. We'll send you a beginner box kit. And uh, we'll take care of that and get you a new kit to sew with Cuddle. So that'll be super fun. So next week we are back. That was such a quick project, even with all the stress there. That was so fun. I'm like, that was really, really easy. Um, so next week we're back. No, not next week. The week after that we are back. And we're going to be doing an online only version. We're going to be doing the My Lammy kit. So if you have wanted to do My Lammy, this is the opportunity to do that. Um, so we're making that play mat, which is a super fun project to do. I still can't find the opening. There it is. Um, so we're going to do the My Lammy on June 6th, 7th, and 8th. I think what the dates are. And then we'll be doing the next week after that. We'll be in Pelham, New Hampshire for the last show for this season. So you can join us up there at Bits and Pieces in Pelham. And we'll be doing the um, self-binding blanket. But we're going to be doing it with cotton. So we're going to kind of, I'm going to show you how you can take a cotton quilt quilt it with cuddle on the back and then use the self-binding method to finish that off or you can use a panel or all sorts of other things on the front but basically using the self-binding blanket technique with other fabrics other than cuddle for the front of it so that'll be a great one if you are in the northeast area please come up there and see us that'll be super fun um like i said that is june 14th and that's where we'll be for our last one before we take a summer break and then we're taking a summer break and we're showing some record pre-recorded things and then we'll be back in the fall so michael do you want to throw up the list so these are our places that we're going to be in the fall so if you are anywhere in ohio michigan indiana illinois wisconsin minnesota iowa Kansas, Texas, Washington, Oregon, or California, we're going to be in all of those places and we are coming out to see you. So um, you can actually contact the shops that are nearest to you and sign up. A lot of them have signups available already for those fall classes. We're going to have a ball and uh, I'm really looking forward to getting out there and seeing everyone at all of those shops. So make sure you take note of that. If you have not joined our I Love Cuddle group, you can absolutely join us over there on Facebook. So that's a fun group of ladies some dudes um who sew so with cuddle all the time so it's a great place for inspiration and being able to share the different projects that you're working on and ask questions or you know just brag about them because we like that too so you can join us over there make sure that you subscribe on youtube so that you get notifications for when we go live and um what was the other thing oh and then make sure you check out check out uh softerplace.org which is our making the world a softer place nonprofit. you can find out more about what we do to make the world a softer place in all sorts of ways so there you go until 
two weeks from now. We'll see you then. Happy sewing. <laughs>